Thanks for joining me. I'm going to be taking you through the Nikon D800 menu, but this menu will apply to a lot of other Nikon cameras as well. But I'm going to show you some of the changes that I make and some of the options that you could do based on different circumstances. It's probably worth you sticking around for most of the video in this instance because there are a few little settings and things later on that you might not know about that might surprise you. So let's get into it now. I'm not gonna go through every single menu settings, I'm just gonna show you the things that I change and tell you why. So we're gonna start off in the playback menu here and the first thing I'm gonna to go to that I actually change, although I have image review on, I'll just note that, uh, for the playback display options, most of the time I have it set like this. The histogram with the picture and all of the details and just the picture on its own. So I like to be able to only have two things to cycle through. So going into the shooting menu, the first thing to be aware of is that there are menu banks. So this means that you can store all of the settings that you set in the shooting menu to different things. So I have one for people and one for landscapes. So when you go into one of these options, you can then make these settings and they'll stay under that bank. And then you can go into one of these other shooting banks and make a, a different selection of settings. And then you'll be able to switch nice and easily simply by switching menu bank. So this is essentially creating presets for the shooting menu. And it only applies to the options in this list here. And they are initially labeled as A, B, C, and D. So I set my primary slot selection to the SD card. Now the secondary slot function, it tells the camera what to do with the card slot that isn't designated as the primary. So you can set it to overflow, backup, which is to do a copy of what's on the primary card. Or if you choose to shoot raw and JPEG, it can put JPEG on the secondary and raw on the primary. Uh, image quality where you can set to raw or you can set raw and JPEG. So you're recording both. Um, I think most people are going to leave it just set to raw. Nef raw recording. We've got two th things here. We've got the bit depth of the files and we've also got the compression levels of them as well. In the compression levels, we have three options. There's uncompressed, which is to leaves you with a bloated file that's quite large. Lossless compressed is to, rem, rem, is to compress the file without any loss of data. Compressed is to compress the file with a small amount of loss of data. I think the wording of this doesn't come with enough detail specified in the camera. I've tested this and the loss difference between lossless and compressed, which is lossy, is so tiny you can hardly perceive it. Um, only in extreme pushed examples can you actually see anything. Now this option below is the bit depth. So we can choose 12-bit raw files or 14-bit raw files. I use lossless compressed and I use 14-bit for the depth. So it's maximum depth and we're compressing the file to shrink it down without any loss of quality. Uh, for the white balance, as you can see, there's two options. There's also one and auto to keep warm colors or just normal. I find normal's fine. Picture control is going to affect the histogram that you get at the back of the camera. And it's going to also affect the image preview that you get on the back of the camera. So whilst you can be shooting in RAW, even if you don't have JPEG set, the preview you get is still of a JPEG and the histogram is still of a JPEG. Because of that, the picture control that you set in the camera will affect your histogram and the preview that you get on the back of the camera. It will not affect your raw file other than the fact that you're going to be making decisions based on the picture that you see on the back of the camera and the associated histogram if you use histograms. I want to see as reasonably close to what the dynamic range of a raw file would be. So I set my picture style to neutral. I turn, I keep the sharpening quite high because it's not affecting the raw file. It's just so I can see my picture well on the back of the screen. It gives me a crispy, sharp picture to look at. And I turn the contrast down as low as possible. So by doing that, what I'm doing is I'm telling the camera that I kind of want the most dynamic range you can give me in a JPEG so I can make better decisions for my raw file. So we're gonna come into the custom menu settings now. You've also got custom uh, menu settings here as well, custom banks. So you can preset these. So if you want to have a whole list of settings here for one style of shooting, then you're gonna have uh, different custom banks that you can go into and program those to have different setups for different situations. So in autofocus, we have AFC and AFS. This is with tracking and just sort of single shot. 
what is the release priority? So that means that when I'm focusing and I press the button to take a picture, if I set it to focus, it's going to make sure the picture is in focus first before it takes the picture. With release, it'll take the picture even if the even if it's not sure that it's in focus yet. Now, the reason with these cameras, I set it to release priority is because often the picture is in focus, but it hasn't confirmed it yet. Um, Nikon cameras seem to work like that. So I find that the tracking and the focus works very, very well. Whatever's in charge of the confirmation to say, yes, that's definitely 100% in focus, is slower than what the autofocus itself is actually capable of. So. I find that I switching these to release, I can just take photos freely. The camera then feels fast and responsive. If you switch this over to re, uh, to set it to focus so that it makes sure that it's in focus first, um, then it's going to feel much slower and then it's taking a long time to take the pictures. Autofocus point illumination for viewfinder is set to on. Uh, the wraparound I leave off. Now the number of focus points, mostly if I'm shooting through the viewfinder, it's usually because I'm shooting people or I'm shooting something where I need to move the camera around a bit more quickly. And I appreciate the focus point spread of the camera, but moving the focus points around, see those focus points on the back there. Now, what I want to show you is this. Let's say I'm shooting something with people. If I want to get to the top corner, I can just do it in two taps, right? If I want to get onto the other side, I can do it in three taps. Look how quickly I can get the the focus point around the screen. So I can move really quickly like this. This is the reason I switch it down to 11 is because when I'm turning the camera and I wanna get different um, compositions really quickly, I wanna be, be able to move the focus point around the screen really quickly. So if I have this onto 51 points, I want you to see the difference in moving the focus point around. You see, it's, it's quite slow in comparison because I'm having to tap the focus point around. Um, let's go back and just show you one more time like this. Do you see, it's much quicker. So I like to be able to work more quickly like that. And I can do a slight focus and recompose anyway if I need to. It's, it's faster to get the focus point in basically the right spot and do a tiny focus and recompose than it is to keep moving that tapping that focus point around all over the place. ISO display and adjustment, I leave that to ISO. It just shows the ISO on the top screen on the camera. LCD illumination, I usually switched on the little display on the top of the camera near the shutter button. If you put that on, it means it stays on all the time when the camera's on. And I like that because it's nice to be able to glance down and see what your settings are. Obviously, it's only when the camera's actually turned on when you switch the camera off that goes off. Multi-selector center button. Let's look at these options here. This is about the center button on the D-pad on the back. And we have three ways in which we can set it. Shooting mode, that's to say when we're taking pictures, I have it set to just bring my focus point back to the center. Now in playback mode, I can do a couple of things, which is quite interesting. So let's say I take this, where I've got it set at the moment, to zoom. So when I look at this picture and I press the center button on the back, I zoom in and see my focus point. So it zooms into where I locked focus. But the other thing I can do with it, which I like to do sometimes, and I do more if I was shooting portraits with this camera, is to go to view histograms. And so when I do the image review now, and I press the center button, it brings up whilst I hold the, the button down on the D-pad, the center button, it brings up the histogram like this for me. So I can see a large histogram, review it. Now I know I can do my up and down on the image review as well and see the histogram like that. But when I'm shooting portraits, if I'm shooting uh, a faster rate, this is for outdoor stuff, obviously for studio, pointless, but the it's nice to be able to view a large histogram quickly. And I'd also use this as a setting for weddings, I think, as well, because, yeah, again, it's nice to be able to, especially on brighter days or if you're outside, to be able to see what you're actually getting. Um, when it's harder to look at the screen on the back, being able to see a nice big histogram like that is really fantastic. So you can get that even during your image review. So you can take a picture, uh, let's take one now like this. And when the picture comes up, it's black obviously because I've got the lens cap on, by pressing the center button on the selector on the back, I can immediately see my histogram. And also in the live view as well. That's to say when I'm got using the, the screen on the back of the camera, 
I can set the center button on the D-pad to zoom or recenter the focus point. Setting it to zoom and I would set it to low magnification because it really zooms in a lot. It is a nice little thing to do. So if you want to manually focus, which is what I would do with the camera for landscapes, it means I can be in live view and when I press the center button, I get the zoom. So I can do that just with my right hand. So I can be focusing with my left hand and I can switch the zoom on and off. Now the assign FN button, these are the buttons on the front of the camera that we're looking at. The assign FN button on the front, which is the lower one, I set it to spot metering. And the reason I do that is in heavily backlit situations, especially if you're taking a portrait, it will meter off the focus point. So you can put the focus point over someone's face hold down this button on the front that's highlighted and you will be able to set your metering in the camera for their face and not have the metering thrown off by bright sunlight behind the person. Now for the assign preview button, which is this one at the top, I set that to playback. So that means I can review my pictures without having to take my left hand away from the camera to hit the play button. It might not be such an issue if you're using a prime lens, but if you're using a zoom lens for anything, then it's nice not to have to take your hand away because then you'll have to kind of lower the camera as well. So just tapping this allows me to review the images on the back of the camera. And the slot empty release, I lock that. So if there's no memory card in the camera, it won't take a picture. I reverse the indicators um, in the camera because I prefer the way that looks. That's up to you. It's just for the metering inside the camera. I prefer that the brighter is on the right, darker is on the left. I also change the assign movie record button. So instead of having to press the ISO button on the top left, I can just press the record button that's near the shutter button. And that will, whilst I hold that down, it allows me to change the ISO when turning the wheel on the back of the camera. Um, that just means I can keep my left hand where it is and not have to shuffle it around to change the ISO. And one of the other things you can do as well, which I like, is to make the rear wheel on the back of the camera able to scroll through images. So when you hit your play button and you're looking at pictures, you can use it to scroll left and right through images. Go into Customize Command do Dials, Menu and Playback. And switch, just switch it on. I mean, when you hit play on the back of the camera, you'll be able to use the rear wheel on the back of the camera to scroll through all your pictures. Please remember to subscribe if you find this useful. I've got a lot of videos coming on using some of these older cameras. A thumbs up would really help the channel as well. And if you've got any questions, just drop me a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. And I'll see you again in another video. Take care. Bye bye.